In the previous chapters, we've talked about the basics when working with document types and properties in the Umbraco back office. In this episode, I'll show you four ways to customize your document types and properties further and make the back office even more user-friendly for your content editors. Let's have a quick look at the agenda. We'll start by seeing how using icons on your document types can spice up the content section. Then we'll make it even easier for our content editors to work with content by adding descriptions to our document types and properties. Next up, we'll be making a property mandatory. And finally, we'll be adding some validation to a property. One way to customize your document types is by giving them an icon. With icons, you control how different types of content are shown in the content section. If we have a look at our content tree here, we have our front page content node, which is using the home page document type. As you can see, the current icon is a blank document. That's a bit boring and also doesn't really say a lot about what type of content it is. Let's make this a little more attractive for our content editors. So we'll open up the home page document type from the info tab here directly on the content. Next to the name here, there's a box with a blank document icon. If we select the box by simply clicking it, we're presented with a dialog where we can choose a new icon and we can even choose another color for the icon. We'll change this to the home icon and let's make it blue because why not? Now let's save and close the document type. Now if we reload our content tree here, the front page content node now shows up with a blue home icon next to it. Another way to customize the back office further is by adding descriptions. By adding descriptions, you make it easier for your content editors to identify when to use which document types and where to put certain types of data. There are two areas where you can add descriptions. The first place is on the document type itself. You'll find the option to add a description to your document type right under the name. This option will allow us to control the text that is shown when you or your content editors are creating content. So let's add a description here saying, use this document type when creating a home page. We'll hit save and close. Now, if we try to create a new page, we will see the description listed under the document type to give more information as to what this document type should be used for. The second area to add descriptions is on a property. So let's go back to our homepage document type here. And we'll start by creating another group called contact info. We'll add a property with the name email. You can see on the name and alias, we have an option to add a description. This will be displayed to content editors to help them identify what information to populate this field with. For example, let's enter a description saying that this property will be the email used for the contact form. I'll just select the text string data type for this one. Submit, save and close. If we go back to the content tab here and scroll down to find our new property, you can see that a description is now listed under the property name. The last two topics I want to cover in this video are the final options in the property dialog, the mandatory checkbox and the validation dropdown. So let's go back to our newly created email property on the homepage document type here. As you can see, we can select the option for this property to be mandatory. So let's do that, hit submit, save and close. And back in the content tab here, we have our new field and this little red indicator tells us that this field is mandatory. Now let's see what happens if we try to save this content node without adding any information to the email property. We'll hit save and publish. So as you can see, the back office will not allow us or content editors to save or publish this page. A value must be provided since we selected the mandatory checkbox. Finally, let's look at the validation dropdown. So back to the document type here and our email property. We'll find the validation dropdown all the way at the bottom here. There are already a few pre-constructed regular expressions. These are there by default. 
we will go ahead and select the validate as an email address. Let's click submit, save and close. Now let's try to enter an invalid input into this property like my name and hit save. Sure enough, we will receive an error saying that the email property is not in a correct format. So if we add the correct format, like my email here, we hit save and publish. And we're now allowed to save the page. Great, I've covered everything I wanted to in this video. Let's do a quick review. So there are four quick ways to make content creation more user friendly for content editors. Add colorful icons to your document types. Add descriptions on document types and properties to make it easy for your content editors to identify when to use what. Make properties mandatory and add validation to further help your content editors create amazing content. In the next video, we will dive into the various permissions you can set on your document types. See you there.